This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through, pull it all together uh, by doing a full statement to cash flows question. Admittedly, like in your certificate level, you're not going to have to do a full cash flow question, but I do think it's useful to be able to help you get an overall picture of how everything works, to be able to give you the maximum possible chance of getting as many marks as possible in the exam okay it's better to have a an overall understanding of something than, than trying to just focus upon the bits okay so what we've got there in terms of the question uh it wants us to go through there doesn't it and um, prepare is it a statement of cash flows the statement of cash flows are there is it for our december year end so when we're looking at the movement in the balances uh, we're going from x4 to x5 so X4 is your opening figures, X5 is there as your, your closing figures. Uh, and what you've got there is that when we're looking at it, is it the cash flow statement, we need to look at the movement in cash, don't we? Okay, so what you've got there is you can see that we have an opening cash balance of 28 and a closing cash balance, is it there, of 24. Okay, so what you've got there is that if you're looking at your statement of cash flows, Right at the very bottom of your statement of cash flows, you've got the, is it the movement? You've got your opening cash and your closing cash. If you want, you can just do a quick check. I haven't complicated it. I haven't put in any cash and cash equivalent. So any government investments that we've made, so government bonds or gilts, and there's no overdraft as well. So quite simply, you've got your opening cash, is it as 28, your closing as 24. So the movement there is for hopefully when we go through and process everything, you'll have the negative four as the movement. OK, uh, if you're looking to write that down, what I do is I get yourself a blank page of A4 paper I'd leave the first page blank and then turn over the page of A4 and then write at the bottom on that bottom page of the back side of the A4 page, just write that at the bottom, okay, the, the last three lines, if you so wish. Then what I would do is I would go back to the first or the start of your A4 page, and then we're going to look, there is it at your operating activities as your first heading, okay? Because remember, with your operating activities, we start there, don't we, at PBT, okay? So what you've got there is that we go to, is it your profit before tax? That's the key bit where we start. And what we do there is we look up and you can see there you have your finance costs. Finance costs are there, is it as 14? So what we've got there is we take the PBT and adjust for your finance costs. So PBT, was it there as 196? Uh, finance costs, I think, were there, was it, as 14. Remember, the finance cost was deducted, wasn't it, uh, as we worked down. So 210 less 14 gives me, yep, yeah, is the 196. And then to work back up to the 210, you have to add back the 14. Hopefully that's a bit clearer now. Key bit, however, is that finance cost is then an interest paid amount, isn't it? Uh, there's no opening and closing interest payable balance. So what I would do is I would leave yourself plenty of space, probably eight or nine lines long. And then what I would do there is I would write interest paid. And your interest paid, was it there as 14? OK. Excellent. OK. You can then write if you want next to it or underneath, immediately underneath tax paid. Uh, so, excellent. So I've gone through there and I've looked up my statement of cash flows uh, and adjusted for the finance costs. What I could then go through and do is I could look down, couldn't I? Because I then have my income tax expense that I can go through there and adjust for, can't I? The income tax expense is there is 62. You've got an opening tax balance of 40 and a closing, is it there, of 47. So, you could draw your tier count working up if you so wish. It's entirely up to you. I'm just going to cheat and do it shorthand. 
So remember what you've got there is you take your opening, you have the figure from your statement of profit or loss, which increases the liability and then you deduct the closing liability because that has not yet been paid. Uh, typing that into your calculator, I think that gives you, is it 55? But obviously, we haven't worked the various bits and pieces just yet from the rest of our operating activities to total things up. OK, excellent. Uh, then what you've got, again, it doesn't have to be in any particular order. Uh, let's go through there and look at, is it the movement in inventory? Receivables and payables. Again, I can hear you shouting, what about depreciation? What about profit or loss on disposal? Ugh. Yeah, leave those. They're horrible. Anything to do with PPE and non-current assets within a cash flow question is hard. OK, let's get the easier bits of any question there. So what you've got there is the inventory. You can see there's an increase in inventory, an increase in receivables. And an increase in your payables, isn't there? So there's an increase in each of them. So let's note that first of all i think that's fundamentally important isn't it that there's an increase in each of them okay uh you then need to look at the movement so the inventory has gone up is it to 12 from 10 so the absolute movement is two an increase in your inventory gives you an outflow doesn't it there of two okay uh, if we then go through there and look at your receivables, uh, the receivables are now, is it 34? They previously were 26. So there's an increase, is that, of 8. Increase in receivables means that you haven't collected in the cash, so therefore you have less cash, doesn't it? There's an outflow of 8. And then on your payables, it is now 21. It was 15. There's an increase in your payables is that of six. If you've not paid your payables, it means you are keeping the cash back. And therefore, you have an increase in your cash. Is that there of six? OK. So we've dealt there now with inventory, receivables, payables, tax, the bank balance. What else is there to deal with? Yeah, you're all shouting non-current assets. No, leave it. Leave that to the end. Uh, we've got various bits and pieces there, haven't we, to deal with in terms of share capital, share premium and the bank loan. So what you've got is at the top of the back side of your page of paper. You can put there your investing activities. Leave it blank. And then what you can do halfway down that second page you can look at your financing activities okay excellent so what we've got there in our financing activities is we look at the bank loan you can see there that on the bank loan there is a reduction in the bank loan isn't there because we have repaid the borrowings so we've got the the repayment of your bank loan it was 250 it is now 100 isn't it so the absolute movement is 150 but it is a reduction it is a payment so it is therefore an outflow isn't it okay uh, then what you've got that uh, with everything else it is looking at the movement in share capital and is it share premium okay uh, Based upon that, though, uh, we have, if you like, an increase in share capital and increase in share premium. So what we've got there is there must therefore be, is it an issue of shares? OK, because what we had at the end of the year was share capital of 180 and share premium of 18. Whereby at the start of the year, we had share capital of 170, share premium, is it of 12?
should give me is it 16 okay uh, just check yeah i think it's 16 isn't it okay excellent any questions all happy again you're probably thinking well, i haven't looked at the additional information uh we didn't need to at the moment you can see there there's a dividend paid so it's probably quite a good idea to, to look at that dividend paid now uh the dividend paid goes in your financing activities uh, dividend paid outflow is it there we are told of 36 excellent okay then what we've got other bits of information uh it starts talking there about included within expenses are a loss on disposal of nine and depreciation is it there of 59 okay so depreciation 59 loss on disposal of nine so back into my operating activities i have there is it a loss on disposal is that there of nine so that's reduced my profit so i add it back on and my depreciation is a non-cash expense and the depreciation that you have there is 59 okay excellent uh we're then going through aren't we after we've looked at that's the only bit to deal with is ppe and the investing activities so we've got the is it the purchase of property plant and equipment uh, so it says there 45,000 for the purchase of some new machinery. So you've got there is it an outflow of 45. And then what you have there is we need to look is it at the disposal of PPE, if you like. We need to work out there, don't we? the proceeds okay so what i would do that is i would get yourselves a, a small little working uh what have we got this is really tricky this is why it's very difficult to work because what we need that is we know that the profit or loss on disposal is equal to your proceeds less the carrying value okay well we know that we have a loss on disposal don't we which was there as nine thousand we're looking for the proceeds but as of yet we still don't know what the carrying value is okay that's gonna be a little bit of a challenge okay uh because the information that's given to us within the question gives us the cost and the accumulated depreciation so we want to find the cost of the asset that's being disposed of. We want to find the accumulated depreciation of the asset that has been disposed of to work out the carrying value. Ouch. Okay. So this is a challenge. Two tier counts. First of all, you want your cost. Second of all, you want your accumulated depreciation. Okay. Uh, cost figures that we've got brought forward. Is it 780? Carry forward 798. Accumulated depreciation, be careful. Remember the opening balance of 112 is on the credit side. The closing balance of 159 is on the, the debit side, ready to bring forward on the credit next year. It's incomplete records like you see in your certificate level. What do we then need to put in? All the information that's been given. So we were told that there was depreciation in the year, was it, of 59. We were told that we went through there and there was an addition of 45. Okay. We're told there's a loss on disposal. That's just an accounting adjustment, isn't it? Nothing to do with cost, nothing to do with accumulated depreciation and those T accounts. So now we need to balance things up and find out what the balancing figure relates to. 
So we have 825 on cost on the left. So 825 on the right. If I balance it up, that gives me a balancing figure of 27. That's the cost of the asset of which was disposed. Okay. Similar accounting treatment, if you balance things up on the right, on the accumulated depreciation, you get 171. If you balance it up, you get 12. Again, that's a debit entry to accumulated depreciation. It is reducing the accumulated depreciation because that is in relation to the asset for which there was a disposal of. Okay. Again, I just think if you don't do it in T account, it makes it a bit more difficult to understand what those figures actually are. OK, but there we go. So what we've got is we've got a disposal of 27 cost. A disposal on accumulated depreciation is it as 12. So what you've got there, 27 less 12 is 15, isn't it? So my proceeds less 15,000 so what you've got now is that your proceeds are equal to is it the 15,000 less 9,000 so add 15,000 to both sides uh, on the right hand side it clears the 15,000 you add 15,000 to the left hand side and then 15 less 9 gives me 6 Okay. Uh, after all that, it's like, what were we doing? We were trying to find the proceeds, uh, the proceeds, the purchase. We've already got 45. The proceeds from the disposal are there as six. Okay. There we go. Uh, you could go through, uh, presumably, and add everything up and see how you get on. Uh, I'll leave that to you to go through and do and hopefully it all balances up. If it doesn't, don't worry yourself too much about it. Other than that, that's cash flows. I can't see you getting too many questions on cash flows in the exam. Uh, just because a lot of it was tested at the certificate level. So the questions that you're going to get on cash flows are going to be that little bit more difficult than what you've had at certificate level. So do just be aware. Other than that. That's it. And I'll see you all in the next session when we start to look at is it property, plant and equipment.